Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today's tutorial is for, surprise, cable stitch leg warmers. Being so close to the holidays, I was thinking of last second makes perfect for gifting and landed on doing our first pair of leg warmers. They keep you warm, they're stylish, and the perfect addition to any wardrobe. Speaking of, if you're looking for more crochet makes to fit your style, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet tutorials with even more dropping twice weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 375 grams of yarn. That's 670 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you prefer lip gloss or chapstick. I am definitely a chapstick girly all the way. Details for the giveaway down below. We are using six stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. Double crochet. Treble crochet, and double treble crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we'll explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting these leg warmers started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and start off by making an even number of chains that is in multiples of four, the width that we like for our cable stitch and alpine stitch detail to be. And it does need to be a minimum of 16 chains. So I actually need roughly four inches or 10 centimeters, which will be 16 chains for me. Once we have our chain, we're all gonna get started on our first row, which is a half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then from here, we're all going to yarn over and inserting our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook, insert with a half double. So insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. That's our first half double crochet. Let's do one more. Yarn over, into that next chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three and continue with one half double crochet into every chain. Now that our row one is completed, let's get started on row two. That's going to be another half double crochet row, so chain two. Flip your work and put one half double crochet into every stitch, and just as a really quick tip, we should all still have the same amount of stitches as our previous row. We are back! Our first two rows are completed. Now before we move on with our row three, we're all going to need to insert our stitch markers so that we can block off the cable stitch detail. So what we're all going to do is start by inserting our stitch markers into our two middle stitches. Now we should all have two middle stitches because we should have all made an even number of chains. And for those of you that have my numbers, I'm going to insert my stitch marker into my eighth and into my ninth stitch. Now once we have our two middle stitch marker stitches into place, we are then going to be counting out four stitches from our middle stitch marker stitches and then inserting our stitch markers into there. So just to make sure that we're doing it correctly, we are going to want to count that stitch marker stitch as well. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, and insert a stitch marker into there. And then on the other side as well. So here is one, two, three, four, and insert my stitch marker into there. Then we can take out our two middle stitch marker stitches because we actually don't need those anymore. Now we're all gonna get started on our row three. So let's all chain two and flip our work. Now our rows are always going to start off with our alpine stitch detail. Now, to get this one started, we're all going to start with one half double crochet into the first stitch from our previous row. So yarn over, into that first stitch, insert, pull through, 
pull through all three, that's our first half double. Then our alpine stitch detail is just going to be a half double and front post double, and continuing to alternate that until we reach our stitch marker, so now let's do our front post double. Now when it comes to doing any of our post stitches for our cable stitch row, they're all going to be worked into our previous odd number row. So since we're working on row 3, we're going to be inserting our hook into row 1. So to get started on our front post double, we're all going to yarn over once. Finding the second half double crochet from our row 1, because this first half double crochet that we just did counts as that first stitch from row 1, we're going to insert our hook underneath the body of that following half double crochet. So bring your hook down, underneath the body, and through the other side. Then from here we're all going to yarn over and pull through. And when we have these three loops on our hook, we are going to want to make sure that we're pulling tall to get the same height as that half double crochet. Then we're going to double crochet per usual, so yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Now all together we should have two stitches for this row, which is a half double and a front post double. Now we're just going to continue doing this until we reach our stitch marker. So I just have one more set left to do, so let's do that together. Starting with the yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet, we're all going to skip that following stitch from our previous row, because this front post double crochet counts as that stitch, and into the next we're going to insert with a half double crochet, and then everyone's next stitch should be a front post double. So yarn over, and inserting our hook underneath that following half double crochet from our previous odd numbered row, we're going to insert our hook underneath, through the other side, pull through, don't forget to pull up tall, pull through two, pull through two. And that's it. From here we're just going to continue to repeat our half double and front post double until we reach our stitch marker. Now I'm already at mine so we can get started on our cable stitch detail. But just as a really quick tip, for your alpine stitch detail for this section, everyone is going to end with a front post double crochet. Now getting started on our cable stitch detail, it's going to be the same for everyone. So we're all going to start with a front post treble crochet, which is going to be our dividing stitch in between the alpine and the cable. So we're all going to start with a yarn over of two. We're then going to find that following half double crochet from our previous odd number row, bring our hook down, underneath and through the other side, yarn over and pull through. Then from here we're all going to yarn over and pull through two until we all have one loop left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Now that is our dividing stitch. Now let's move on to our actual cable stitch detail. So what we're all going to do from here is yarn over three times. There's one, there's two, there's three, preparing for a front post double treble crochet. Then we're going to skip the following two stitches from our row one. So there is my first, there's my second. Into that following stitch we're going to insert with one front post double treble crochet. So we're insert a hook underneath the body of that stitch and pull through. Then from here again we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we all have one loop left on our hook. So all together yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And then we're going to be doing another front post double treble crochet into that following stitch. So yarn over three times into that following stitch. Insert your hook underneath the body and through the other side and pull through. Then yarn over and pull through two until we all have one loop left on our hook. Just like that. Now from here we're going to be putting one front post double treble crochet into the two skip stitches. So yarn over three times again. Into that first skip stitch we're going to bring our hook down underneath the body and through the other side. Yarn over, pull through. And from here, yarn over and pull through two until we all have one loop left on our hook again. And then another front post double treble crochet into that following skip stitch. So yarn over three times again. Into that last skip stitch, poke through the other side and pull through. Then yarn over and pull through two until we all have one loop left on our hook. Now that is the twist portion for our row three completed. Now to finish up our cable stitch detail, we're going to be doing one front post treble crochet into the following two stitches. So yarn over twice, underneath that following half double crochet from our row one, bring your hook underneath, through the other side, pull through, then yarn over and pull through two until we all have one loop left on our hook, then another front post treble crochet into that following stitch, so pull through, pull through two, 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 
and now the cable stitch detail is complete. Now the cable stitch detail is always going to be framed with our front post treble crochet or a dividing stitch. So one more front post treble crochet into that following stitch. So we're going to insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, two, and two. And now the cable stitch detail is complete. Now from here, what we're going to do is our alpine stitch detail. And for the second alpine stitch detail for every odd number row, it is going to mirror the first alpine stitch detail that we did. So for everyone, no matter what size we're making, everyone's last stitch for our alpine stitch detail should have been a front post double. So we are going to start this detail with a front post double as well. So yarn over into that following stitch from our row one, bring your hook down through the other side and pull through. When we have these three loops on our hook, we're all going to pull up tall, pull through two, and pull through two. Now that is the first stitch for our alpine stitch detail, and our following is going to be a half double crochet. Now what we're going to do is start by counting out 10 stitches from our previous row. And we all want to make sure that we're counting out 10 stitches due to the cable stitch detail, plus the dividing stitches that we did, plus the front post double crochets. So we're all going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Into that following stitch, we're going to insert with a half double crochet. And then from here, continue on with the front post double and half double until we reach the end of the row. So just to do the next set, which is actually my last set, we're all going to start with a front post double. So yarn over, inserting our hook underneath the body of that following half double crochet from our previous odd number row pull through, don't forget to pull up tall, pull through two, pull through two. Then for our half double, we are going to be skipping one stitch from our previous row and doing a half double crochet into the next. And this just so happens to be my last stitch for this row. And that's it. Our row three is complete. Now everyone's even number row is going to be a single crochet row. So what we're going to do is chain one, flip our work, and put one single crochet into every stitch. So just to do the first, insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through, pull through two. Again, next stitch, pull through, pull through two, and continue this until you reach the end of the row. We are back. Our first four rows are complete. Now let's get started on our row five or second cable stitch row. So chain two and flip your work. Now what we're all going to do from here is start off our row with our alpine stitch detail. Now, a few tips when it comes to doing our alpine stitch detail is that every alpine stitch row, our stitches are going to be staggered from our previous alpine stitch row to get the texture that we want. So as an example, my previous alpine stitch row started with a half double. What we're going to do from here is insert our first front post double crochet into the half double crochet from that previous alpine stitch detail so that we get the texture that we want. Because if we end up putting our front post double into a front post double, we'll end up getting some ribbing, which is nice, but not what we want for this piece. So what we're all gonna do, no matter what size we're making, is start with a front post double for row five. So yarn over. Like I said in one of our previous clips, every cable stitch row's post stitches is gonna be worked into our previous odd numbered row. So since we're working on row five, we're gonna be inserting our hook into our row three or our previous cable stitch row. So like I said, we're all gonna find that first half double crochet Insert your hook underneath the body and through the other side, pull through. Now don't forget, we're still going to pull up tall, pull through two, and pull through two. And since our following stitch from our previous alpine stitch detail is a front post double, we're now going to do a half double crochet into the top of that stitch. So skipping the first stitch from our previous row because this front post double counts as that stitch, we're going to half double crochet into the next. And that's it. Our alpine stitch detail and half double crochets are going to be done the same way. Since I just have one set left to do, I'll do that with you. My following is going to be a front post double crochet. So yarn over. Finding our previous alpine stitch details half double crochet, we're going to insert our hook underneath the body, through the other side, and pull through. From here, pull up tall, pull through two, and pull through two, and then a half double crochet. So making sure we're skipping that next stitch from our previous row, because this front post double counts as that stitch, I'm going to half double crochet into the next. And we're just going to continue on with our front post double and half double crochet until we're ready to do our cable stitch detail. And I am actually already there. 
So our cable stitch detail is always going to be framed with our front post trebles. So just to do that together, yarn over twice. Into the front post treble from our previous cable stitch detail, we're going to insert our hook underneath the body, through the other side, pull through, for a total of four loops on our hook. Then we're just going to yarn over and pull through two until we all have one loop left. Then from here we're going to get started on our cable stitch detail. So doing our row five's cable stitch detail, we're all going to start with one front post treble crochet into each of the following two stitches. So yarn over twice, underneath that following stitch from our previous cable stitch row, we're going to pull through and yarn over and pull through two until we all have one loop left on our hook, and then another front post treble into the following. So underneath that following stitch, pull through, pull through two, two, two. Then from here we're going to get started on our crossover. So that's going to start with a set of two front post double treble crochets. So yarn over three times. Skip over the following two stitches, and then into the next two, one front post double treble crochet into each. So like I said, skip one, skip two, into the next with one front post double treble. So just continue to pull through two until we all have one loop left on our hook, and then another one into that following stitch. So insert, pull through, pull through two, until we have one loop left on our hook. And now that we have that, we should have two stitches left for our cable. All we're going to do is work back into those two skip stitches, but now into that window that we just made for ourselves. So to get that started, it's going to start with one front post double treble crochet. Hang onto your working yarn, and we're going to pull our work down towards us, because it can very easily fall off, and then we're going to find our two skip stitches. Here's my first, and here's my second. Start by inserting your hook into that first skip stitch, so bring your hook back underneath the body, through the other side, and finish up your front post double treble crochet per usual. And that is the crossover for this row, we have one more left to do. So again, yarn over three times. Hang on to your working yarn and pull your work down, finding that last skipped stitch. From here, we're going to bring our hook underneath the body of that stitch and through the other side, pull through. Then yarn over and pull through two until we all have one loop left on our hook. And that is our cable stitch detail. Now we're going to close off the row with our dividing stitch, and that's always just going to be one front post treble crochet. And now that our cable stitch detail is completed, we're going to finish up with our alpine stitch detail. So how this is going to work, our second alpine stitch detail, like I said, is going to mirror the first alpine stitch detail. So two ways to figure that out is taking a look at the last stitch that we have for our previous alpine stitch detail. The last stitch is a half double crochet, so we're now going to start this section off with a half double crochet. Or we can take a look at the first stitch from our previous alpine stitch row, then we're just going to do the opposite stitch. So since this first stitch here is a front post double, just do a half double crochet into there. Now, since we all have to do a half double crochet next, what we are all going to do is count out eight stitches from our previous row and then half double crochet into the next. And we're counting out eight stitches for the cable stitch details that we just did. So counting that together, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now into the following, insert with a half double crochet. Then everyone's following stitch should be a front post double into the half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row. Yarn over, underneath the body of that half double crochet and through the other side, pull through. Then from here, we're gonna pull up tall, pull through two and pull through two. Now we're gonna continue on to do our half double crochet and front post double crochet sets until we have two stitches left because the last stitch should be a front post double crochet for everyone but we are going to be combining it with a half double crochet just to secure everything down. Now I actually already have my two stitches left, so let's do our last set of alpine stitches together. Now everyone's following stitch should be a half double crochet. So as a refresher, skip one stitch from our previous row because this front post double counts as that stitch, and half double crochet into the next, and we should all have one stitch left. Now we're going to do a front post double crochet per usual, so starting with a yarn over. Insert your hook into the last half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch row. So insert, 
pull through. When we have these three loops on our hook, we're all going to pull up tall, yarn over, and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. Then from here, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the corner stitch of our previous row, and pull through for a total of four loops on our hook. Then yarn over and pull through all four. And now our row five is complete. Now everyone's following row is going to be a single crochet row like I said. So chain one, flip your work and put one single crochet into every stitch. We are back. Our first six rows are complete. And now we're going to get started on the following row. So chain two and flip. Now for this cable stitch detail, it is going to be a repeat of rows three through six until we get the total length that we need. So since we're about to get started on our row seven, it will be a repeat of our row three. So I'm just gonna get started on the following row with you and I'll let you do the rest on your own. So getting started on a row seven, which it is going to be a repeat of our row three. So just as a refresher, we're all gonna start with our alpine stitch detail and that's going to be one half double crochet into that first stitch. Then into that following stitch from our previous alpine stitch detail, which should be a half double crochet for everyone, we're all going to insert with a front post double crochet. That's basically it. We just want to make sure that we're always inserting our post stitches into our previous odd number row. Now, if you guys need timestamps for any of these rows or any of these sections, those will all be linked in the description. And all we're going to do from here is continue on with rows three through six until we get the total length that we want. So placing this first row right at our ankle, we're gonna continue on with our rows until we get the height of the leg warmer that we need. So you can make this as short or as long as you guys like. Either way, I'll meet you guys back right after a cable stitch row, and then we can move on from there. All right, so we are back. The total length of my cable stitch detail is complete. I have a total of 69 rows. My height is roughly 20 inches or 50 centimeters. And now we're going to start filling in the leg warmer portion. So we should have all ended right after a cable stitch row. What we are going to do is chain one and start with a single crochet row along the edge of our cable stitch detail. So what we're going to do is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, starting with two single crochets. So everyone's first side row should be the side cable stitch row. So I'm going to find that top loop and insert with two singles. There is one. Then into that same top loop with a second single crochet. Now into my following side row, which should be a single crochet row. It might be a little bit hidden, but if you take a look at the back, you can tell that that's a single crochet row. We're going to find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this to reach the end of the row. Let's do this just once more. Finding our next side row, this is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with two singles. So there's one and then there's two. And then into my next side row, which is my side single crochet row, find that top loop and single crochet and that's it. We're going to continue on with our single crochet row till we reach the end and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so our single crochet row is complete. Now we're going to do our following row, which is going to be a back loop slip stitch row. So chain one and flip. Now all we're going to do from here is just put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So finding that first stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert our hook into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. Then gently yarn over and pull through everything. Again, into that next stitch, insert into that back loop only, yarn over and pull through everything. Continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we reach the end of the row. Keep in mind not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row will be too tight to work into. We've made our way all the way down with our back loop slip stitch row. From here, all we're going to do is repeat our back loop slip stitch row. So we're just going to get started on the following one together to make sure we all got it down. So from where we're at, let's all chain one and flip our work. So just like our previous row, start by finding that first stitch, insert into that back loop, yarn over and gently pull through everything. And that's it. All we're going to do from here is continue to repeat our back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So placing our cable stitch detail at the front of our leg and stretching our back loop slip stitch rows and make sure that you're stretching it as if we're wearing it because it does have a decent amount of stretch to it until it can reach mid calf. Now I know it sounds a little funny, but we will be filling it in on the other side as well so that it forms a complete tube, but go ahead and get this completed and then I will meet you guys back. 
I am back and one side of my leg warmers is completed. Counting from my first single crochet row, I have a total of 20 rows. This width is roughly 2 inches or 4 centimeters unstretched, or my total width that I have is 6.5 inches or 17 centimeters unstretched. Now we're going to be doing the same thing on the other side. But we do want to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch because we want to show the front of the single crochet row to keep everything as clean as possible. So this is the bottom portion of my cable stitch detail. This is where my row one is for my cable. I'm just going to insert my hook into that corner stitch and then we're going to continue on with our single crochet row and then our back loop slip stitch rows for the same amount of rows. Once we have that completed, I will meet you guys back so we can seam everything together. So we are back. Now both of our side panels are complete. Now what we're going to do from here is seam it up. But right before we get started, I just want to let you guys know I have a total of 10 inches or 26 centimeters that is unstretched. Then the next thing we're going to do is to try our piece on and then insert our stitch marker into the stitch that we have that's nearest to the back of our knee. So placing our first cable stitch row at our ankle, we're going to wrap our leg warmers around our calves, making sure that we're stretching it as if we we're wearing it. And we're just going to kind of pinch it all the way up until it reaches the back of our knee. And then we're going to be inserting our stitch marker into that stitch on both panels. Now I inserted my stitch marker into the 36th stitch from the top. That's roughly eight inches or 20 centimeters. And now from here, we're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of our side panel detail. So the same side that our first cable stitch rows in, and then we're going to do our outside loop slip stitch seam. So all we're going to do is insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And we're just going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam. So to get that started, find that first stitch into that front panel and insert into that front loop. Find that next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Again, next stitch into the front, insert into that front loop, next stitch into the back, insert into that back loop, and pull through everything and that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we reach our stitch marker. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut and then I'll meet you back. All right, so we are back. Our seam along the back is completed and now we're going to fill in the inner thigh portion. So what this is going to be is just more back loop slip stitch rows, but with a decrease right at the corner so that we get a little bit more width for our thigh. So what we're going to do from here is make sure that our work is flipped right side out. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into the top corner stitch. You're going to pull our working yarn through chain one and start with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and then I'll meet you back until we have our stitch marker stitch left. So we are back. We made our way all the way down with our back loop slip stitches. We have left that last stitch right before our side seam. My stitch marker was into that stitch on both sides, but I went ahead and took that out for now. And all we're going to do is a decrease of three slip stitches. It's going to be into this last stitch, into the top of the last back seam stitch, and then the first slip stitch on this side as well. So just to get this started, insert your hook into that last back loop, pull through. Then into the top of this back seam, just insert your hook in through that last stitch, pull through, and then into the following stitch on the other side, insert and pull through. Go ahead and insert. And when we have these four loops on our hook, all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through all four. Now this is going to be where our decrease is going to be. So don't forget to insert your stitch marker into the top of this decrease stitch. Then from here, continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until you reach the end of the row. So we are back. Our first decrease row is completed. Now it's basically just going to be a repeat of this previous row until this becomes the width that can wrap around our entire thigh. So I'm just going to do the following row with you. So from here, chain one, flip our work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the stitch that we have that's right before our stitch marker stitch. And then I'll meet you guys back. We are back. We put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, left that stitch that's right before our stitch marker stitch, and now we're going to do another decrease of three back loop slip stitches again. So inserting your hook into that following stitches back loop, insert, and pull through. Into our following stitches back loop, which is our stitch marker stitch, we're going to insert, 
pull through and then into that following stitch, insert, and when we have these four loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all four. And don't forget to insert your stitch marker into the top of that decrease stitch. And now from here, continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Then all we're gonna do is continue to repeat this row until we have an inner thigh portion that can actually fit around our thigh. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam it all up together. All right, so we are back. I have just finished up my inner thigh portion. I have a total of seven rows and that's all I need, so I am complete. Now all we're gonna do is an outside loop slip stitch seam, which is the same seam that we did for the back of our piece. So just make sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, do the same outside loop slip stitch seam, then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, the next thing we're going to do is our cuff. So making sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, we're all gonna be inserting our hook into the last back seam that we have that's along the bottom. Then we're gonna do a single crochet row. We are then going to insert our yarn onto our hook and do a chain one. Then from here, we're all gonna be putting one single crochet into every other side row. So getting this started, we're all gonna start by finding our first side row. This raised one is mine right here. So I'm gonna find that top loop and insert in through there with a single crochet. Now this divot is my following side row. Since we're only working into every other, I am gonna be skipping that one. And finding my following side row, which is this next raised row, I'm gonna find that top loop and insert with a single. And that's it. Continue with one single crochet into every other side row. Once we reach the bottom of the cable stitch detail, one single crochet into every stitch. Then continuing on, one single crochet into every side row. And then when we don't have any more side rows left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space. Now, as a really quick tip, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So once we made our way all the way around and slip stitched into that chain space, make sure to try on your piece to make sure that this single crochet row isn't too tight for your foot slash ankle. If it's too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip. Now that our single crochet row is complete and everything is fitting nicely, we're now going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our cuff to be. Now I would like for mine to be just about an inch and a half or four centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain six. Now that we have our chain, we're all going to do a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's a turning chain. Then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch and continue with one slip stitch into every chain until we reach the base, remembering not to tuck too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the flying rows can be a little too tight to work into. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now gonna connect it into the base. So what we're gonna do is just find that next available stitch into the base, insert into there with a slip stitch. Now that slip stitch doesn't actually count as a stitch, that's just to connect. Then we need to work our way up to the following row, so slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, still doesn't count as a stitch, and flip our work. Then from here, we're all gonna be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So finding that first stitch from our previous row, making sure we're not working into any of those slip stitches into the base, we're gonna insert into that back loop and pull through everything. Now we should already know how to do our back loop slip stitches, so continue with one into every stitch. Then at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, and I'll meet you back at the base just once more. We are back. Our first one, two, three rows are nearly complete. Now we're gonna slip stitch it into the base, and it will be done the same way that we did the previous row. So just finding that next available stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. Those two slip stitches into the base don't count as a stitch. Flip our work. And then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and that's it. From here, we're just gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you back so we can seam it all together. We are back. We have just finished up making way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows for our cuff. Now the last thing we're going to do for this portion is seam it, and this seam is gonna be done exactly the same way as all of our other seams. So just to talk you guys through it, make sure that your work is slipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to do our outside loop slip stitch seams 
until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain of one and cut. And last thing on the list is our top band. So to get that started, we're all going to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into the last stitch that we have into the inner thigh seam along the top and we're going to do a single crochet row. You're going to pull through and start with a chain one. Now working into every side row, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side row. So start by finding our first side row and this is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with a single. Into my following side row, which is this divot, I'm going to find that top loop, insert with a single, and let's just do one more set of side rows. My following side row is this raised row, find that top loop, insert with a single, into my following side row, which is this divot, find that top loop, and insert with another single. Continue with one single crochet into every side row, then one single crochet into every stitch along the top of our cable stitch detail. Go ahead and make your way all the way around. And just like for the bottom cuff, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as it can stretch. So if you try it on and it's a little bit too tight, redo some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, redo some stitches with a tighter grip. We are back. Our single crochet row along the top of our piece is completed. Now from here, we're now going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our top band to be. I'd like for mine to be just about four and a half inches or 12 centimeters. So I went ahead and made a chain 20. Now what we're going to do from here is a half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then yarn over and insert your hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook with a half double and continue with one half double crochet into every chain. We have made our way down with our half double crochets. Now we're going to connect it into the base. Now the ribbing for the top band is not reversible, so we're all going to want to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, and we're going to be inserting our hook to the left or clockwise. But once we have that down, what we're going to do is count out the next two available stitches into the base. So here's one, here's two. Into that second stitch, insert with a slip stitch to connect our row one. Now that slip stitch still doesn't count as a stitch. Then, in order to work our way up to the following row, which is going to be a back loop slip stitch row, simply slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. Still does not count as a stitch. Flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. Our first two rows for our top band is complete. Now it's just going to be a repeat of our back loop half double and back loop slip stitch row. So just to get started on the following row, we're all going to chain two and flip. We're all going to make our way down with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch and I'll meet you back at the base. We have made our way down with our back loop half double crochet row. Now we're just going to connect it into the base the same way that we previously did. So just to count out the next two available stitches, here's one, here's two, into that second stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch to connect our half double crochet row. Then just to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and that's it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. We are back. We have just finished up making our way all the way around with our top band. Now the seam is going to be done the same way as all of our other seams, so just to talk you guys through that one, make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up. Do our same outside loop slip stitch seam when we don't have any more stitches left to a chain up of one and cut. Then, once we have one completed, we are going to be making a second one that is exactly the same. And then once we have both of our leg warmers finished, we are all done. Last thing we'd have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye!